Good Friday morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing. Going to our impact map and seeing some of the main stories that we're expecting in the next few days. Uh, nothing significant today or tomorrow, but Sunday. Two things. See a trough of low pressure approaching that will increase winds off the Sierra Front into parts of far um, western Nevada. Also, that same low will uh, bring some moisture and instability and some scattered thunderstorms across the mountains of central Idaho. Keep an eye on that and see how much will be wet versus dry, but uh, those are the primary concerns as we go through the next couple of days. Looking at recent precipitation, lightning on the right-hand side, just a scattering of lightning as it exited our region. It was much more widespread the day before, and precipitation amounts for the most part under that lightning were fairly light, a couple of hundredths to a tenth of an inch, but enough with the higher humidity that uh, new stars have been fairly slow. We'll see if that changes as we go into a much warmer and drier pattern. Our Great Basin fire activity new starts in the red. You can see we've had a few on the uh, Sierra front. Also some uh, in the vicinity of lightning here across Utah, but scattered about. Uh, not a heavy IA day by any stretch of the imagination. Precipitation the past seven days dry across a good portion of uh, western Nevada and uh, going into southern Idaho. And uh, that's also the case for the past 30 days in those areas. Those are where our fuels are the most critical. And we can see that we've had some moisture over southern Utah, the Arizona Strip, uh, and uh, far northern Utah a little bit. Over the past 30 days, we still see there was quite a bit of moisture in southern Nevada, northwest Arizona, and going into southern Utah. So we have no immediate concerns there. And uh, this can be seen on our current fuels as we look at uh, down there in the Arizona Strip in southern Utah. Uh, fuels are, or ERCs are below the 50th percentile, quite moist. There have been some starts and some pockets still dry, but nothing widespread. Our main concern of fuel-wise is across our drier areas of the Sierra Front where they'll be seeing some winds by Sunday. And also up here in Idaho, though you do notice a couple of oranges and, and yellows, those are ERCs in the 70s or even between the 50th and the 69th percentile, so not quite as critically dry as they were before the first wave of lightning hit over there about a week or a week and a half ago. So uh, there's a better chance of lightning ignitions in the southern portions of the Idaho forest. We'll see how that plays out this weekend. Looking at the latest satellite imagery, we see high pressure building now across the west coast, the typical late summer, early fall high that builds from California up to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, the Four Corners high has uh, fallen apart, so we don't see much in the way of monsoonal moisture. Uh, a lot of it's pushed out into Mexico. Uh, we are starting to see that moisture shift further uh, to the Bermuda high that's off the Atlantic, and we're seeing, as we are in hurricane season, tropical uh, depression type activity from Florida all the way towards Louisiana. This moisture not expected to affect us in the immediate future. So for today on the left hand side the map shows high pressure with dry air building across the west coast. And that dry air is sliding into the western portions of the Great Basin. You can see the seven day uh, fire potential on the right hand side where the most moist areas are across the Arizona Strip in southern Utah. Uh, and where we've had some moderation even up here in parts of northern Idaho uh, with uh, some of the recent uh, low end wetting rains, most critically dry areas further to the west. Now for today, weather wise, uh, on the left hand side, we see still single digit humidity across good portions of Nevada where we've been the driest. However, up in Idaho, uh, especially up into the mountains, humidity's upper teens to a uh, low 20% range. Uh, seasonably dry, but nothing out of the ordinary. Quite dry here in Utah, seeing a lot of uh, single digit humidities, even down by Price and Green River. Uh, the monsoon is starting to dissipate, so we should start seeing rapid drying. On the right hand side, there could be still some isolated buildups or an isolated shower thunderstorm over the highest peaks in southern Utah um, and also in the Uintas, but nothing widespread. As we go to Saturday, high pressure ridge builds across the region. A uh, little weak trough starting to carve out across uh, just off the uh, California Oregon coast. You can see that we're still slowly starting to dry out on our dryness levels. And then Saturday, weather wise, again, bone dry across Nevada and into parts of Utah, starting to dry out with humidities in the low to mid teens now across most of Idaho. Weather-wise, very quiet, maybe an isolated thunderstorm over the high Uintos, otherwise dry. 
It is Sunday that we have the concern. A trough of low pressure starting to carve out. You see that curvature a little bit more approaching uh, northwest California. Uh, that's going to do two things. It's going to increase the wind gradient here off the Sierra from the southwest, which is a good flow to have winds come down and accelerate off the uh, Sierra crest into Nevada. For that reason, on the right-hand side, we have a high risk for wind right in the lee of the Sierra front. The other thing with this trough carving out itself out, it's making the atmosphere more unstable. You're noticing more areas in the black here, which is a borderline enough humidity sometimes to cause thunderstorms. And our models are indicating that up in uh, northern Idaho, we could have some isolated to maybe scattered the thunderstorm activity. Um, some of our fuels are not uh, have modified just a little bit, but we think that in some portions of the highest peaks, we could see uh, some lightning that could be on the drier side. So we'll continue to monitor that situation. Uh, Sundays, uh, the wind gusts on the left, you can see what the critically dry winds, uh, strong winds are. Uh, these yellows are indicating gusts of over 30 or 35 in some spots. Lighter winds elsewhere. And on the weather map, you can see where our isolated shower and thunderstorm coverage is expected to be on Sunday. Looking at our three-day precipitation totals, quite dry, really, as we go uh, from this morning, Friday, through Monday morning. Um, nothing even across Idaho. We're expecting uh, some scattered showers, so some of the precipitation not really expected to reach the ground. As we go into Monday, notice that uh, kind of weird pattern. It's still a little weak low through here. Notice the less of the tannish shade and more of the black, even some dots of green here. That's mid-level moisture deepening. So we can see more instability, more showers, and maybe some thunderstorms from the Uintas uh, to the Wasatch to the Stansbury Range and to the Ruby Mountains. And because it's under high pressure, not much movement expected with that. So we'll see those uh, storms may start trending wetter. Our overall fuel potential dryness still fairly dry through here. And ironically, we're actually going to be drier in southern Utah and the Arizona Strip in terms of having less uh, humidity and thunderstorms than in northern Utah and northern Nevada. So we go into Tuesday. We see that moisture building through here. So we think across northern Utah, northern Nevada, at least northeast Nevada, showers and thunderstorms becoming more widespread and also now coming up from, from uh, Arizona. So this could start moving into the Arizona Strip and southern uh, Utah as well. And then as we go into Wednesday, you can see it's still that moisture deepening through here. On Thursday, still in that pattern, so we're starting to see some of our PSAs that were browns now starting to go into that moderately dry yellow category. Uh, so we'll see how that all plays out. Our seven-day precipitation totals, just light amounts through the most part, but across the Uintas, down across the Wasatch into the mountains of uh, southern Utah, and even uh, towards the Arizona Strip, maybe a low end, two-tenths of an inch of wetting rain. 8 to 14 day outlook has changed a bit from yesterday. We're seeing a cooler than normal signal across the country's midsection, warmer than normal with high pressure building along the west coast. That's a typical late summer, early fall feature, uh, drier than normal up there. The deeper monsoonal moisture starts shifting towards uh, New Mexico and Colorado, maybe just brushing eastern areas of Utah, but uh, looks like we'll be drying out overall. And that concludes our briefing. Have a great day.